Have you ever taken a drive through the outskirts of your city and wondered when and why all the farmland and the forests got replaced with new neighborhoods? If you live long enough, you'll probably see this happen around some of the cities where you live, and it's helpful to understand what's going on here when cities expand like this and what the consequences of this kind of expansion are, for better or for worse. This kind of outward expansion from a city happens through a process called suburbanization. Suburbanization can happen in any country with a growing population and a growing economy, particularly when there is an abundance of land available for development and the government actively encourages this kind of outward growth. In the United States, a great deal of suburbanization happened right after World War II. At that time, only 13% of Americans lived in the suburbs, but by 2010, more than half the population of the United States called the suburbs their home. The original purpose of suburbanization in America was to provide for the large influx of people moving back to the cities after World War II so they would have somewhere to live. The idea was marketed to Americans largely by the federal government as the American dream. Part of the reason for government involvement was to stimulate the economy through home building, lending, and building the infrastructure needed to support suburban life. The freeway and highway system, for example, was developed during this time, providing a method for people to commute to the city for work and then back home again. And this also created a car-reliant society, so a lot of people had to start buying cars too. Suburbanization has some benefits and some drawbacks that affect people in different ways. One of the key benefits is the availability of open space and less traffic to the residents who live in these new suburbanized areas. Suburbanization can also effectively drive down the cost of housing in both the suburbs because people can continually look for property further and further away from town until they can finally find an affordable price. And as a result, this can also decrease the demand and the cost of housing in the center of the city as well. Suburbanization can also stimulate the economy through home building, lending, and building building the infrastructure needed to support suburban life. The expansion of roads and public utilities creates a great deal of economic growth. And while there are some advantages, there's plenty of disadvantages as well. And one of those negative consequences is that when the population shifts to the outskirts of town, it adds significant new costs for a city or municipality to build those public utilities when running water lines, sewer lines, roads, electricity, and other public services further and further out from the center of town. The expansion of this infrastructure does create jobs in the short term, but it also adds significant new and ongoing costs as well. Suburbanization also makes it more difficult to provide public transportation, which requires people to depend even more on their own cars, which also means more gas consumption and pollution. And as the demand and cost for housing in the city decreases with suburbanization, it also reduces property values along with the city's tax revenue, which can result in fiscal deficits and a lack of funding to provide city services. And when there's growth in suburbanization, there's typically a negative impact on the environment as well. Suburbanization is linked to increased land use, fuel consumption, vehicle mileage, and overall energy consumption. Suburbanization has also caused an increase in the release of greenhouse gases and an increase in the usage of water and oil. Suburbanization is usually seen through the lens of residential development, but it affects the industrial world as well. While industrial developments used to be situated in the urban core of many cities, a lot of companies are looking to build facilities and plants in less populated areas to take advantage of the availability of parking space in newer buildings, and also to provide opportunities for employees to work in less congested areas. And suburbanization also has a bit of controversy in its history as well. During the early years of suburbanization, up until the Fair Housing Act of 1968 was enacted, African Americans, Asians, and Latinos were kept out of the suburbs. The FHA actually required racial segregation in the early days, a practice known as institutional discrimination or redlining. The Fair Housing Act of 1968 prohibited discrimination based on race, color, religion, sex, and national origin. But racial segregation persisted for decades in the suburbs despite the Fair Housing Act. And while the idea of suburbanization seemed idyllic when first introduced to America, the creation of suburbs drained resources from urban centers, encouraged segregation, it made commuting in cars a necessity, which also led to a lot of wasted hours and fuel sitting in traffic, and eventually led to isolation from the community as a whole. To help solve some of the problems created 
degraded by suburbanization, smart growth initiatives have become pretty popular. These call for mixed-use developments that encourage walkability and community involvement in live, work, play areas. If you want to learn more about suburbanization, be sure to check out the full article at retipster.com, which you can find linked beneath this video. And if you want to expand your real estate knowledge, be sure to check out this next video, and we'll see you there.